Welcome back to One Hour Limit Locked, where I race to complete some of RuneScape's most iconic challenges, whilst limited to just one hour of gameplay each day. In Season 1, we got ourselves a fire cape in 46 days, and in Season 2, we achieved Barrow's Gloves in just another 38. But now, in Season 3, it's time for our toughest challenge yet. The question is, how many days will it take us to complete our first ever raid on the account? We not only have to get ourselves geared and leveled up just to step inside a raid, we then have to complete it in under one hour, as logging out in the middle will end our run. I've no idea how long this is going to take me, but I can't wait to find out, so join me for the journey here in Season 3 of One Hour Limit Locked, as we become a Tomb Raider. Hello there everyone and welcome back. It's episode 59 of the series. Season 3 of One Hour Limit Lock, the final season. And we are about to enter our first ever raid. I'm not clicking the logout button just yet, unlike normal. Because we're not doing our burbs and herbs at the start of today. We'll be diving straight on in there. And I don't want to waste a second because, well, we've only got an hour and one attempt you know, we can't log out and continue the attempt. So I want to make sure I'm able to focus as much in the early couple of minutes to get underway. And uh, that's why I'm talking it ahead of time. For those who are less familiar with the tombs, though, a tiny, tiny crash course of the tombs of a mascot. Entry level's pretty forgiving. If you die, you respawn with free food. So it's pretty forgiving, but you do lose reward potential, of course for that and for us more importantly we would lose time so obviously we're going to be trying to avoid death at all costs the bosses are probably going to be pretty slow with our stats because we're not going to be hitting that hard all that often but we'll see there are four different paths and you have to complete all four of them before you can move on to the final boss so i will be doing them in the same order i always do them which is kepri barb uh no kepri Zebak, Akka, and then Barbar, and then the final boss. And if you don't have any idea what any of that means, you're about to find out because it is time to dive in to our first ever raid on the account. Let's go! Let's go! I need to get my pre pots together. I'm going to try and give a decent overview of what's going on as I'm doing it, but who knows? Right, we're going to drink all this stuff. I didn't have those set to let me drink them on the shift click, but that's okay. I'm going to drink all of this. In fact, we'll just drink one range dose as well, and then we'll get the rest of our food back out, and we are ready to go without further delay. Get this moved over. Need to form a party. Dumbass. All I need to do is click that make party button. We know we don't want any invocations on, so that is fine. Yes, don't ask me again. Okay, so the first path of Scavarus is over here. Now, before the boss, there is a puzzle room in every path. Well, I suppose other than Barbar, it's not really a puzzle room at Barbar. And we get to choose which side we're going in here. I'm going on this side because I don't want to do this one. We are going to try and remember that, but I am awful at this. I'm not going to lie. Good start. I've already forgotten it. Oh my gosh. Just gonna deal with this guy because I don't want to get pinged. Fuck. Come on, die, man. What the hell? Okay, that's a good indication of how this is gonna go, I think. Got this, 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 this. This. I just forget every time. No, I feel like I was so close. This is not going well. It's a terrible start. And I don't have any blood spells to heal myself back up off these scarabs. Left, right, top, middle. Uh, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. I promise I don't have worms for brains. This one's easy. Number 29. Straight up. Boom. Good job, I have my puzzle helper. Right, this one. We gotta match them. We got a diamond, boot, and a wave. That's a boot. And a diamond there. Boots over here, I think. Yep, we got the diamond too. This is the wave. We've got star knives. 
I don't know if this is actually what they are, but... And my stamina's all ran out because it took me so long to fucking do that. Okay, we're into the first proper room now. Already down on health and stuff. We've got Kepri. I'm going to send all my specs straight away just so they begin to regen. Why is it asking me to... Jesus. I guess it's a quick enter. Yeah, quick use, I should have done. She is going to throw her fire at us and we are going to step out of the way of it. And then when we see the bugs appear around us, we're going to do that. So we get knocked in a diagonal line here because we want that dung to line up nicely. She's actually going pretty quick through this first phase here. There are a few phases to Kepri. You have to get her shield down three times in a row before you can actually deal health damage to her. But that is the first one down. We are going to get poisoned here, so we'll put our anti-venom on and continue hitting this spitting scarab until it's dead. Then I'm going to drop one of these and swap over to my blowpipe so I can quickly deal with as many of these scarab swarms as possible. We've also got the dive bombers coming in, the suicide bombers. They are awful. You don't want to let one of them hit you. It's a bad time, and I should probably put my backpack on as well for this. We will be picking that mana right up, of course. I just had to unequip it so I could get my blowpipe out. And now the second phase, very similar to the first phase. You'll see she's also spawned these eggs now. They're going to explode, deal a little bit of splash damage to me and spawn these little fuckers who will pelt me with ranged attacks, which is why I just kept my prayer range on after we had dealt with the first minion. We want to get this one right down here. That's perfect, exactly what we wanted. I'm going to top up that prayer a little more. And now the melee is trapped. He can't hit us at all. We can deal with the major in peace and worry only if we see a dive bomber coming at us he's going to teleport when he gets too low but we interrupted his big damage attack so that's the main thing keep dodging those bombers come on there we go and now we can deal with the soldier scarab safely we have to deal with those before we move on to kepri otherwise they will heal her so they will be constantly overhealing any damage that we would actually do. There's just no point hitting her before dealing with them. And it just alternates between doing a line of dung and doing these bombs. And the bombs are fine because we're praying against the scarabs and we're not getting hit by them most of the time. We're about to go into her final phase where we can actually damage the boss's health. And she's just going to throw an extra line of dung there. So I'll make sure I stand next to the old one. And that lines it up nice and perfect at the corner. Lovely stuff. Just popped her into the last phase now. Now this should be the very quickest part. I'm going to just throw that off to conserve a little bit. What am I talking about? I just used a pot. We didn't have enough. We see the flies around us. We know she's going to dung again. So we get back to our line. This just means that we get to keep the arena nice and clean. We are going to grab our Manta Ray back, of course, and then make our way to the next bit, the next portion over in the Path of Krondis. We've now got an invent space as well, because I took a full super restore in that room. The prey was the bit I was least sure about how much I'd need. We do need an invent space here as well. You can see I've already got these tiles marked. I actually came in on my main account last night, switched over to the profile that I used on one hour limit locked and made sure all the same squares were tagged so I knew where to go because this room's a pain to learn and I didn't want to have to learn it again. So here what we're going to do is just switch over to our mage and get on this croc as fast as possible. I would usually freeze him here with Ancients, but we don't have them, so... Oh no, he got to it. That's going to lose time, because we're going to have to do three of these waterfalls now, instead of just the two, and I didn't mark the ones on the other side. So, if I get hit here, it's not ideal. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, if you get hit by any of the traps, you lose half of the water in your tank, and I'm not good at avoiding traps. But we should still be okay there. We got an extra 50, so we move through onto Zebak himself. 
I'm actually going to brew up here because the stat drain doesn't really matter. We are not going to be using anything other than ranged in this room. So I am just going to equip my blowpipe because I don't want this equipped. Even though we'll go in with the crossbow because it reduces your ranged accuracy. Anyway, crossbow. We will be moving to the blowpipe later in the fight. But for now, it's just crossbow. We are on pretty much full health, so I'm not going to brew and restore again. Let's just take a sip of this range potion and get on into Zebak. Probably a bad time, but I didn't really want to wait 15 seconds to move. All right, and we're praying for ruby bolts here. That's all. That's a mage attack. You have until the orb hits you to pray against it, so you can flick them on and off, and it might be worth it to conserve our prayer, to be honest. The over attack he does is ranged, and looks like a big rock. This is a special. We'd got him down pretty quick, apparently, because he went straight into it. There are a potential for four specials in total. There are two different types of specials, and you can do them twice each throughout the fight depending on how fast you progress. But you can skip some of them if you get lucky rubies in the right spot. So far we haven't had any, you would have heard them. It would have hurt your ears. And this is the other special, we're already straight on into it. We're speeding through here. I did push that jug wrong though, bit of a misclick. Gonna use this one instead, push it over onto those rocks so that I can stand behind them because Zebak is about to do a big scream that hurts. You can be anywhere up to three tiles behind a rock and you will be safe from the raw range on this thing. is not that long, I just walked into acid. Fortunately, the anti-poison from the anti-venom we used in the previous room is still active at the minute. So, did save us from being actually poisoned and we can hit these jugs to splash the area around them which just clean up the acid a bit more. Just did it there as an example. That's not what you want to do. Focus on for a minute. It's probably time to switch to the blowpipe, to be honest. We were very unfortunate. Didn't get a single, single ruby bolt spec, so not good luck there. And I'm being a bit slow here, to be honest. I need to push this and shoot it, like, straight away. And I'm not going to be able to fire from here. That was risky. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. That's all four specials. He is going to start firing faster, but we don't really care about that because it still slows balls. All we have to do is auto attack until he dies. All right, very nice time so far. When would actually speeding through this, this is not bad at all. We are going to go ahead and put this ranging potion back in here. We don't need it anymore because we're going to talk to this helpful spirit. And he is going to give us some lovely, lovely supplies here. That's a lot of liquid adrenaline. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with that much liquid adrenaline. But I'll take it because we want some. Just trying to reorganize ever so slightly here. Uh, yeah, that'll do. We're going to be using that throughout the rest of the run. The smelling salts are going to give us a humongous buff, which helps greatly in every regard. And that is why we did the bosses in the order we did them, because we didn't need the buff as much for the first two bosses that we just did there. We will need it much, much more to our magic and range levels in the next two rooms. So here we've got a simple light bouncing puzzle. We're going to bounce light from the... I don't have my thing set, okay. Let me just set these real quick. Are they backwards? I set them backwards, didn't I? So there are these shadows that you're supposed to avoid. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so confused. And also the beam itself can damage you. That was purely an example. Not at all. No, that's what's wrong. Okay, I need my left click to be pick... Sorry, I need to get this right because it'll fuck me up. My left click is pick up, my shift click is rotate, but why is it anti-clockwise? I want it to be just, yeah, that's fine. Perfect, now we're good to go. I can actually do this room. We'll put a mirror here and move here and then rotate it. I'm going to run down here now because we want to be next to this when the light hits the other statue so we can start mining straight away. Unfortunately, we are going to get hit by the shadow for some more 
incidental damage there. Usually it wouldn't be too bad because we would just heal up with our bloods in the next boss room, but uh, we don't have bloods. Where are we going this time? Uh, down, down, down? No. God damn, I've been doing terrible at avoiding those. I'm usually way better at avoiding stuff. It's one hour limit lock, stress pressure, why the only label it. Or stress. I'm not stressed about this at all. This is the most fun I've ever had. Well, barring a threesome. Think that's it? Yeah, baby. It is going to be three downs, though, because we only have a room pickaxe and our mining level is super low. So we're going to have to do another puzzle after this, even though it's tantalizingly close. So there's always three mirrors that you can pick up and the rest you can't. You can usually get it done with your three, whether or not you use the things that are already in the room. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to. And I've run out of run energy, so I'm actually just going to take these smelling salts out and have them right now. But we've got enough to last us through the rest of the room, so we don't need to worry about the length running out on them. And the extra run energy that gets restored from them is going to be a big help to just finish off this room. I think that's it. Very nice. See, that does all last seven and a half minutes. It'll be enough to get us through this next fight still. And then we've still got another three doses with only two more bosses to go. Don't forget to deposit the pickaxe on the way through to the next room. And then we will brew up, I guess. Because, yeah, I don't have bloods. Don't want to waste a super restart. The smelling salts will take care of it completely fine. This needs retagging because it's no longer a thingy. Right, what do we want in this room? We don't want our crossbow like ever. We're starting on this and then, yeah, that's good. Stop wasting time and get in there. All right, Akka, some people will probably consider this to be the toughest room. You need all three styles, and he uses all three styles himself. He's going to start off on melee, so I'm going to run around as much as possible to try and avoid those hits, because they will hit me through prayer. There is a method known as the butterfly, and I have no idea how to do it, so I'm not even going to attempt. This is how I do things. I just run around until it goes down, and then we're on to the next one. So... We've already progressed to the phase where he spawns these shadows. We want to get on those as quick as possible because if this hourglass bar fills up and there's one on each hourglass at the same speed, then it's going to be a big attack in this quadrant of the arena. Thankfully, we got him down relatively quick there. So we're going to get back onto Arim. We can only hit him with Mage right now because he's praying against the other two styles. Never mind, he just switched. Memory game, one, two, three, four. Every time he switches, we are going to have to hit him with a different style as well. So this one is melee. We make sure he's in our quadrant because we can't hit Akka while he's in the quadrant with a, a white shadow. And this time he's attacking us with ranged. Next one, he'll be attacking us with mage and we will be attacking him with ranged. And then that's it. Just goes like that till the end. This attack we don't really need to worry about, it's just uh, a bomb, it's like more of a thing you worry about in multiplayer raids, because you might fuck over one of your teammates by walking where they were walking. We're zooming, we are absolutely zooming through this raid. Okay, this is a bit unfortunate. Oh no, I can get it from here. Nice. Managed to get that guy down while doing this, which means we can... Just run straight over here and start hitting him again. He's back on mage now though. Last shadow. There is a final phase after we do actually deplete his health bar as well, but last shadow. I'm gonna swap over to the melee because the DPS will be better and he's about to swap anyway. He just did. We're saving all of our specs up. <gasps> I didn't get my liquid adrenaline out of the pouch. Oh, I need to do that in the second that he goes down. Got it. Lovely stuff. We just gotta chomp down this last little bit, and then it is into the spec phase. 
Lovely stuff. We're going to get all those prayers right on. Drink our liquid adrenaline so our specs cost half as much. And get hit in the face with Akka's cum. And there it goes. Easy peasy. On we move. We are absolutely breezing through this, folks. I wasn't expecting it to go this smooth. This room could be a bit more challenging because we don't have the ancients and this is the room that I want them for the most of any. So, fingers crossed it doesn't go too bad. But we've got a lot of supplies still, so we should be pretty good. Right, this is the least puzzly of the puzzle rooms and we are gonna need to hit the enemies with the style that they are weak to which for the most part is ranged there's only two enemies that we don't hit with range these brawlers which we want to hit with mage and you always max it against them with the correct style and then there is going to be some ranges that we hit with melee everyone else we want to do with ranged Ooh, just a tiny bit off a max hit there. Might be worth just... Oh, that's a tiny bit off a max hit too. And then we got these shamans. They spawn the little thralls, which can be annoying when they stack up. That's one reason why we'd want barrage is to use on those specifically. Just trying to get for as much of this as I can. We got the cursed ones there leaving a venom trail around, but right now he's not bothering me. And the other thing that you've seen is the skulls popping up above stuff, so I'm gonna have to deal with that now. We'll go ahead and pour some shit in there, and that will sort that right out for us. I'm gonna just heal up and run this way because of the volatile on me, and I, I'd want to make some space. I don't like how they're all stacking up right now. Get that mage out of the way, get the shaman out of the way, because we can do those with ranged. And then we move in for the throwers with our melee weapon. I wonder if that's enough to max it with the... Yes, I just need to get the defender on as well. This lit up. Need to get that soon. Otherwise, it will hit me for a lot of damage. You do not want to take damage from those. Nice heal from the blowpipe. Very nice. Okay, the volatiles we can actually make use of a bit to clean up some of these thralls. So we don't mind it so much when we see one of them coming at us. But we do need to be careful of taking too much damage from these thralls as we progress here. And that cursed baboon is getting awful close. We'll just take care of him. Done a decent job of avoiding the venom in this run as well. Gonna have to tap that again. And then swap for that. Get this one. Get this one. Get this one. Oh my gosh, there's still more waves. <laughs> I thought we were getting close to the end. <sighs> it's only just started. Yeah, you get hit like 30 or 40 or something if you don't get that, so you do need to make sure. Make sure we get... Oh no, I specced on a 2 health. What am I doing? Yeah, this is where you would barrage, blood barrage to get your health back up going into the next room. But instead, we're just going to have to fucking do them one by one like this. And that is the room clear. I'll be a bit messier than it usually is with Ancients. And our salts have run out, so we want to make sure we have them on us for this. We've got so much liquid adrenaline, I feel like I just need to spam it. So I'm going to... And we don't want mage in this room, we don't care about mage. We might want that though. Uh, probably not. We probably don't want that. We want melee for the most part. Okay. Right, we're going to go on in. This is mainly melee, like I say. So we are going in. Not got all of our spec. I need to set all these to fucking quick use as well. I just set it to the hell. Hey, hey, hey. But we're going to drink our liquid adrenaline spam our spec. Ooh, nice big hit. Another little one, another decent one, another decent one. All right, I'll take that. Get another one in too. Got to stand by this rock when the big thing hits us, otherwise you get absolutely chunked, like 60 HP. 
and I'm meant to dodge out of the way of that attack, but I didn't. And we're ignoring these little cunts because we don't have time to worry about them. I'm actually taking a lot of damage here. It's not ideal. But we've got him down. That is ideal. Okay, please tell me I can one hit these. Oh no. No. Oh, I got there. Nice. Now we just get to attack the boss for free until this phase ends. Because he's dumb and he doesn't realize we're stood here next to him. Nice heal up. Okay, back to the melee mode. Bit more healing. Lovely. Oh, and we're back. Right. Get a nice double hit. Maybe I should use the crossbow. Might be able to one hit with the crossbow, I'm not sure. Oh no. That's bad. That's bad. Alright, I'm not going to skip this phase. I'm just going to do it. In fact, shall I try the crossbow? I'm an idiot. Oh, we need to be bad melee. Ranged is not usually very effective against him. It is with a bow for which I'm used to doing him with, but if you attack him with melee up there, then he realises and ends the phase, so you have to use ranged. Almost done, that. Oh, our liquid is trying to run out. Not worth using another one here, really. Not that we need four in the last room. Did give us way too much. Oh, man. There we go. And that is Baba. We just have the big final boss to go. But we get another supply pack before then. I'm going to go over to the helpful spirit for a conversation about life. Pretty much always this way, we pick power on the first one, life on the second one. When you're learning, you might want to forgo power in form of chaos sometimes, but most of the time power is just so helpful. And look at all these supplies now, we don't have to spend any real life GP. We can just top off with those ones, because, you know, single doses. We don't need our anti-venom. We'll put everything in this pot that we don't need, because... Any supplies that we don't need, sorry, because it goes back to our bank, which is obviously very good. Okay. Uh, oh, we've already claimed what am I on about. Right, so we want to get all our supplies ready, which is like we are kitted out. The only thing we don't have actually is Ambrosia, come to think of it. That is, oh, no, we do have an Ambrosia. We got one. That's like the get out of jail free, fix anything button. And these nectars are brews, the pink ones are restores, we've got scarabs and silk dressing, so I'm going to keep some of these in the pouch for now, we'll try and draw them out in before the final phase of the boss. We'll get another few of these, and yeah, honestly we're looking pretty good, looking real good. I guess we'll just get one more nectar. Shouldn't really need these at all. Okay, time for the final room. There are three phases to the Wardens. Three phases. Uh, the first one is the simplest and the easiest. We are going to get our melee gear on. We're actually going to put an extra away because I need an invent space for if I want to switch. Oh, do we actually have a dialogue? Because it's the first time we're going through it. All right, so we stand in front of this. We're going to take about seven hits here. A couple more. That'll do. And then we're going to run out here. Because we want to take hits so that these skulls don't reach them and that they stagger at different times. Because if both the specials happen at the same time, we're dead. So we got to make sure they happen separately, otherwise we would definitely get hit by one of them, and you don't want to get hit by these because it's just constant damage, and it's not very fun. We are going to just... I suppose I should be meleeing, it's better. And if this thing hits me before I take this down, it's going to hurt. I think I might have just got it. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, we're on to the range phase. The first range phase, at least. 
And Tamukun's one is going to start chasing us around. He's weak to range right now, so that's what we're going to attack him with. He's attacking with either mage, range, or melee if he's close enough. I'm not used to the range on this thing. I'm having to stay so close to him. It might be worth just swapping to long range for this. Just for this part. Because it requires like constant movement to kite him around. Oh no. And I've just realised our salts have run out, so I'm going to eat them. Turned off our prayer and I missed it. That's not good. That's not good. Okay, I'm just going to eat a bandage. I'm going to just chill for a second. He's about to go down, so I'm just trying to chill. And heal up a bit before he goes down, okay, and then we want to get in for our specs on the head. Get as many off as we can, because we have a limited amount of time to hit it, and you always max it on this thing, so make sure you're on strength on your dragon dagger, because you will hit higher. Oh, I got robbed of that last one there, that's an absolute travesty. Alright, we're on to mage phase, so we're just going to hit with the trident and keep doing the same thing. Not sure how many downs we're going to have to do here. Depends how much damage we do to him during the skull phases. I think it's probably going to be three downs, so we'll have another range phase after this. He alternates between some terrible non-dodging. Oh my gosh, I've been all over the place in this room. Maybe I'm talking too much. Okay. Went down relatively quick. My switch is terrible, though. Yeah, it's going to be three phases for sure. Now we're back onto ranged. Gosh, I'm going to crack the scarab and the silk dressing. They basically just do a passive heal and a passive prayer restore. Like... Every few ticks, you get some hit points and some prayer back. You'll see them just going up periodically through the fight. I'm getting hit all over the place. I'm actually doing terrible. This has been the worst room by far of the road. And it's not that difficult. I'm just doing real bad at it. Alright, last down. Here we go. Actually prepared this time. Right next to it as well. Oh no, the spec run out. Liquid Adren even. Okay, one more hit. Nice. We're going to draw out some extra stuff from the bag. Seeing as though we used a lot of supplies in that first portion. And... Crack a Scarab, get over here. Get this off. Swap into our ranged gear for the next part. Just gonna put one of them away because I need an invent space. We've got a bit of time to just chill here as long as we dodge the warden. She's not too nasty in this first part. You just have to follow the pattern. We've got this central tile in the middle of the room. You stand on the right hand side of it, then you stand on the left hand side of it, then you stand in the middle. It's easy enough until the extra sh stuff starts happening. A bit more of a chill portion here. We do want that Hasta available though. Hopefully we get some rubies here. We didn't get any so far in the Zebak. Oh, there we go. Asking you shall receive. Absolutely beautiful. 100 damage free of charge. Well, for a couple of costs to our HP. Swap to a melee weapon to get the skulls because they are one tick with any melee weapon. And then we are straight back onto the boss for the next portion. She's going to do this five times, spawning an extra skull every time. And after the end of those beautiful once again, we'll be moving into her final phase. We're going to throw our range prayer up because Akka just spawned and he is going to start attacking us with range straight away. He will eventually swap over to mage because he's an annoying bastard like that. But we're going to keep an eye on him for the entire remainder of the fight. And we'll see when he whacks his staff into the ground like that and swaps straight on over to our mage prayer so we don't have to worry about it. We're going to keep on with the crossbow for a bit longer until we're down further into the health pool. I got hit like an idiot there. 
Oh my gosh, that was a bad skull phase. We're all good though. And now Kepri has also spawned, I'm sure you'll have noticed, so we've just got to dodge her bombs as well, the same as we do in the fight with her usually. Did I just get robbed of a... I heard it, but I didn't see it hit Sparkle one. Maybe I just missed it. Oh, I missed the Akka, I'll tell you that much. Lovely stuff. Swapping with Akka. Okay, it's probably blow pipe time now, isn't it? Oh, I can't believe I just got my liquid adrenaline out of my pouch. I am a G. And now we're in the final phase. Things just get a little crazy here. There's lots of lightning. You've got all the things from before to worry about still. And tiles fall away from the back of the arena. If you're on them, you take damage. And it gets smaller and smaller. So I'm just going to try and keep my focus. Move around as much as possible so I don't get hit by one of Kepri's bombs. Because that is the most likely to absolutely clap you out of nowhere in this phase. There's so much going on. It's impossible to see where the bombs are. And what the lightning is, so you just want to keep moving around as much as possible, really. Maybe pop an Ambrosia here, just get a nice full heal and make sure we're nice and healthy. And then we will continue to hit the boss until it dies. And that is the Tombs of a Mascot, folks. We have a full invent left over. That makes me feel good. It was only in, in entry mode, obviously. But it makes me feel confident that we might not have to do a shit ton of training before we crack normals. We might be able to just ramp it up. In fact, right now, I'm feeling like we'll go straight back in tomorrow on a level 50 invocation. Maybe a level 100 even. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. But that... For the most part, other than a few mistakes I made, was quite a breeze. We didn't get a purple light, unfortunately, on the chest, but you can't really expect a purple light in an entry level red, so nothing to complain about there. Let's have a look in our chest. We got the thread! No way! That's so good! Holy shit! I mean, this is guaranteed after 10, but that is so good! We don't have the level to make it yet. And we got four in our seeds. That's actual bank. Oh, that's made me hype. That has. What level do we need for this? 75. Oh, so far. I believe we've got another reward waiting for us as well. Once we pop outside here and have a little chat with Mesa. And have a little chat with these guys, I mean. Oh, I think we have to go for every dialogue option. Wait, no, we don't, right? Do we just go back? Talk to her again. Oh, more options. Uh, so what happens now? There we go. Off you pop. And then we get a lovely, lovely combat lamp for the Into the Tombs quest, which we are going to put on 50k. It's not going to get us any levels, so I think I'm just going to go defense, honestly. Yeah, there we go. How do we get 75 crafting? I've got 13 minutes, I'm gonna use it. That is a lot of... That is, that's a lot. That's a lot of gems. 12,000 rubies, you telling me? You're telling me it's gonna take 12,000 rubies? What? <laughs> I guess if we unlock green dehyde, we can do like, bodies. Oh, I'm just gonna go to the GE. In fact, am I gonna go to the GE? Or am I gonna go... To, I'm gonna go and change my spell book. I could have just gone to like a, a house portal on the good guild of house portal world, but I couldn't be able to hop and scroll through the list, so I figured I'd just go this way. I wasn't expecting to actually have like time at the end of the day to do something, but like I said, that was only entry mode. We still want to do normals, and 150 invocation is gonna be a lot harder than zero was. So I gotta make use of my time, get as much done as I can. And that thread could actually be very handy. 
Not that crafting levels are really the most useful thing for us to have right now, but I feel like there's got to be a quicker way. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. I guess staffs are pretty good, but 10,000? It's a lot of staffs. Okay, we are finally on Ancients now that we completed the raid. I'm gonna head over to the GE and I'm gonna get some gems of some sort. I feel like that's the quickest way to just get started. What's the difference between the price of dragon stones? Do we lose money or do we make money? 11,256. No, we lose money. What about diamonds? 934 to 1620. Lose a bit of money. But it's probably worth it. Because I just want to get quick levels at the end of the day here while we're chilling. Okay, maybe it's not worth it. Because it takes 9,000 of them and 12,000 of them. But I only want a few levels. I just want a few levels so I can get myself onto D hide. Why not the gems buying? There we go. Give me someone to get started. Yeah, so for those who don't know, the thread of Eladinus that we got as a reward there, you use it to upgrade your rune pouch to the divine rune pouch, which can hold four different types of runes. You do need 75 crafting to attach it, so... Oh, this is actually going to be slower than I thought. But really, I didn't want to use my brain for the last seven minutes or so. I just wanted to chill, because... They're like I was talking and focused non-stop throughout that. Oh, hope you all enjoyed the first raid. I hope it wasn't a bit anticlimactic. I know it was pretty easy for us. All being said, there were a couple of dangerous moments. A couple of moments. But yeah, I'm thinking tomorrow we'll try 50. At least a 50. Maybe a 75. I don't think I'm going to go straight in on a 150 because I know they're tough for me even on my account with much higher levels. So I don't want to like rush myself into the deep end. But I definitely think we can start to ramp it up day by day until we get to a point where we're not able. And if you're curious, I will consider this season to be officially finished when we complete a Tombs of a Masket raid at 150 invocation level or higher. That is a normal. After that, we're done. So that is the ultimate end goal. It always has been. At first I wasn't sure whether I was going to just do entry or normals as well. But pretty early on I decided I was going to do normals as well. So that's always been the goal. Any higher than that, you know, it's not something I care to keep playing one hour a day to demonstrate. Like, I've made my point at this point that literally anybody, anybody I hope, I've made my point, can get to raids, even if you only have an hour to play each day. That was what the whole series was built on, just people thinking, well, I don't have a time to raid on RuneScape. I can't play that much. Well, all, all it takes, one hour a day, one hour a day, and you can be raid ready in 142. We did our raid on day 143, didn't we? So, I count this as raid ready. We just haven't raid completed yet. This is hella slower than I was thinking. Yeah, getting 75 crafting on a one hour time limit's probably never gonna happen, to be honest. Like, this'll be probably something I do after I finish the series and just unlock the account for my own personal use. Well, there is a level. Yeah, there's not much point in me crafting, I don't think. There's just no way we're gonna get to 75 within any of our time limits it'd take like a week plus i think it's time to head back on it over to our favorite tomb make sure we're all set up for tomorrow and we are actually on ancients for once so we'll give us the helping hand in those rooms where we need it the most i'm really glad we got that done the first try like i said though there were some moments definitely and you know a death in a higher difficulty means more and more because the time will start to add up the one thing about invocations is not only do they add special mechanics to the different fights and encounters, they also just passively increase the stats the more invocations that you turn on of every enemy inside the raid. So it gets harder as a default plus extra mechanics. No, oh, my arrows isn't in here. We want soul as well. Feels like a lot. I'll just take the burst. Let's have a look at the invocations real quick. 
I've got about 30 seconds, so maybe I can just turn a couple on in prep. I guess I'll just do it at the start of tomorrow, so I don't forget what I've put on. There's quite a few that we could go with. Oh, I turned my notifications off. That's why I didn't just get a beep when that clock ran out. Okay, folks, well, we are ready to go in for our second attempt tomorrow on a slightly higher difficulty. We do have Ancients with us now, though, for the next one. So, all been well. It'll go just as smoothly. We'll move on to the next tier. We'll keep going, and eventually we'll get those 150s cracked off. But all not going well. We may have to go back to training for a little while if it turns to be too difficult as we're getting up towards that 150 level. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this episode and leave a like on the video as always. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can stay tuned and follow the progress as we dive deeper into the tombs of a mascot here. It's been a pleasure as always. Look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. I'll see you on the next one.